Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the iFlight DC5. This is a 6S Bynum Fly 5 inch freestyle model that comes with a DJI Air unit. So you will at least need the DJI FPV goggles and either a DJI controller which will bind directly to the Air unit or your own separate transmitter and receiver. They do make a 4S version which you can order with various receivers already installed like this XM Plus receiver but with the 6S version you have to add one yourself unless you buy directly from iFlight. The frame is in a dead cat configuration the idea being that you don't get any of the props in shot meaning that you can use the onboard recording from the air unit in place of a separate HD camera. There are some complications with the dead cat configuration though. The back motors are slightly closer in towards the frame than the ones at the front which can make it difficult to tune. But with that being said I do like the frame in general. The arms are 5mm thick and are separate from the body with the back arms being individual and the front arms are a single piece boomerang style so if something breaks then they can be replaced. They have also added some clear plastic strips along the arms to stop the motor wires getting hit by the props in a crash. You also get given an anti-slip mat for your battery along with a single strap to hold the battery and two separate DJI antennas for the air unit and mine also came with two antenna straws for a separate receiver. The motors are iFlight's own 2207-1800 kV Zing brand with the Nazgul Freestyle props. I think my preference would have been a 2306 stator instead of 2207 because I find the 2306 stator slightly smoother for flying freestyle, whereas a 2207 stator tends to be more current hungry and better suited for a lighter racing setup, but they should still do a good job. The stack is iFlight's Success F7 which consists of a 50 amp BL Heli 32 4 in 1 ESC board with a 50 volt 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor attached to it to filter out any back EMF and noise. The flight controller is their plug and play DJI F7. It came flash with Betaflight version 4.1 and didn't have JESC setup or any Betaflight on screen display settings. But with the ESCs being 32 bit and the flight controller being an F7, it's very future proof, so you can easily add all of that. There's also three spare UARTs or four if you are binding directly to a DJI controller through the air unit so you have got plenty of upgrade options as well. The setup was pretty good in beta flight. I've left their rates and PIDs the same but I did have to add D-Shot commands for a lost model alarm because the grass is getting very long outside and there's no physical buzzer in this package. The air unit is being powered by a regulator built into the flight controller so there won't be any problems using a 6S LiPo. I did have to activate and register the air unit myself via the DJI FPV assistant so there's a little bit of work to do there and you have to bind it to your DJI goggles using the bind button on the side. My only complaint is where they have stuck the camera because the lens is protruding out the front. Now normally this wouldn't bother me so much because on most freestyle frames the arms and the motors usually stick out as well giving objects more options to hit first in a crash. But other than the tips of the props the camera is going to be the first thing to hit most things. I'm sure you can 3D print a protector for it but it should have been really easy to move the holes for the camera back a couple of millimeters. It's also mounted in TPU which I'm not usually a fan of. However this DJI system tends to be fine when mounted in TPU so coupled with the decent frame and components I'm not expecting any vibrations or jello issues in the video feed. The camera did come flat out of the box so I had to use an M2 hex driver to adjust it. The model's dry weight is 423 grams and 595 grams with a 1050 milliamp 6S LiPo which is about right for a freestyle model running a HD camera. My only concern is that the majority of the weight is stacked on top of each other so we have got the ESC and flight controller then the air unit and the LiPo on top which can cause a pendulum effect when doing back flips and forward flips. And if you wanted to use a secondary HD camera such as a GoPro then it's going to be well over 700 grams with that included so I wouldn't really advise doing that. 
Left in the box is a spare battery strap and a second set of the Nazgul props, along with a load of spare screws. So here is some DVR footage taken from the DJI goggles with the subtitle overlay included. I've got focus mode turned off and high quality mode turned on with the camera set to a 4x3 aspect ratio. So I can dynamically stretch the footage similar to what GoPro does without losing the vertical field of view in a video editor. And as you can see, the props are nicely out of shot. There's no jello feeding through to the camera. And when it comes to picture quality, I think the DJI system is very close to a GoPro Session 5. And it even beats it out when it comes to dynamic range, in my opinion. So in that respect, this setup is a good substitute for a freestyle model carrying a GoPro Session 5, with the added bonus of having a live HD feed back to the goggles. However, I don't think it's on par with a Hero 7 or Hero 8, especially with HyperSmooth turned on. So in that scenario, I think I'd like to see a lighter frame using perhaps the Cadex Vista rather than a full-sized air unit, because despite only having one antenna, the Cadex Vista seems to perform as well when it comes to RF performance as a full-size air unit. Then I'd be able to stick a GoPro up top and have a lighter setup. The model does fly very smoothly though. I did notice on a couple of punch outs that the battery voltage was sagging close to its landing voltage in some cases. So I still think a 2306 data would be better suited than the 2207. And I was getting a slight pendulum effect when doing forward and backward flips, but the tune did feel a little loose in general with some bounce backs. So I think there is some improvement to be made there. The flight time was pretty impressive for a freestyle model at around four and a half minutes with some aggressive throttle. So if you have the cash and are looking for a bind and fly freestyle all-in-one HD solution, then I'll put some links in the video description as well as in a pinned comment if you wish to buy one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers. When it hurts like this. Tell